While fielding on the first day, painter discovers that he's not feeling well. Goes to the dressing room from there. He goes to the hospital, discovers that he has a fever of 100 plus and he has tonsillitis. And, uh, you know, the Australians are batting and then the English bat and the English are 264 for eight, I guess. And they are some 70, 80 runs behind. So, you know, for all their bravado, they are in danger of, you know, uh, being on the back foot in this test by a significant margin. And suddenly Painter comes out to bat. Painter has escaped from the hospital in his hospital gown. Uh, and people in the English dressing room are just amazed to see him. And he somehow goes out to bat, uh, you know, takes certain in inebriation uh, and perhaps some bit of food and he goes out to bat. He does well on that day. Uh, the play ends, uh, stumps are called and goes out to bat again the, uh, the next day, puts on a decent partnership from Australia, uh, England being in a position of, uh, you know, uh, trailing by 70, 80 runs. He puts them in the position of a lead and then goes back to the hospital uh, after fielding for some time in the Australian third innings because he just can't take it. And that innings is one of those innings that, you know, uh, really describes how the other English players also, uh, you know, were, were contributors to the cause. They may not have been as big as Larwood in the narrative, but they did pretty well. And even someone like Painter, who was almost lucky to be there, did pretty well and hit the winning six in this test. And, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, Jardine actually goes to meet him in the hospital on the rest day. And Jardine tries to rouse him up by saying that, you know, there were English soldiers who fought, uh, you know, against much tougher circumstances, much tougher enemies in the two Anglo-Afghan wars. 